Okay, let's get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our virtual program on After Effects today. Uh, you can check your emails for more details about the program. Your microphone has been muted, but if you have any questions, we welcome you to type them into the chat or the Q&A box. Uh, my name is Anna, and I am joined today by Stephanie, and Stephanie will be reading your questions out loud to me. Um, we do ask you to please be respectful when making comments. Uh, I am already sharing my screen. This class will be recorded for future viewing, uh, and that recording will be up on our YouTube page. So, welcome to After Effects, basic motion graphics. Uh, first, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what is Adobe After Effects? Uh, you may have heard the name or you may not have, but it is a software program that is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud that is typically used for digital visual effects, motion graphics, and compositing. Um, and it is frequently used in the post-production process of filmmaking and television production. After Effects is an incredible software and I love it very much, but it isn't really ideal for editing footage uh, by itself or creating illustrations. Instead, After Effects is usually used after the footage has been edited or after the illustrations and logos have been created. So motion graphics refer to basic animations that are used to make logos, text, and illustrations stand out. In this class, you will learn how to animate pre-existing illustrations created in Adobe Illustrator, which is another program that's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. And you will learn how to apply motion effects to footage that has been captured. Um, so let's dive in and let's create. Oh, not yet. <laughs> that's our end screen. Okay, uh, first and foremost though, I did wanna talk a little bit about our uh, handout and our exercise files. So Stephanie, if you could drop that link in right now into the chat. Um, you have access to the PDF handout for this class. So you don't have to take notes. All of what I'm saying is going to be captured here, I promise. Um, and then you also have access to our exercise files. So we are going to be working on a beach and ocean uh, illustrator file. Um, you would want to download those to your computer. Uh, you can hit download all. And when you do download all, they'll arrive in your downloads and they will be zipped. Uh, if you've never had a zipped file before, you want to right click it and hit extract all. You can go ahead and save it to the same destination, but once it's extracted, it opens a new folder. And there you can see now the files are on my computer instead of, uh, on the Google Drive. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you guys though, uh, I like showing you what you will be creating. So for the first part of this class, we will be working on a simple uh, GIF animation. We will take an illustration that's already been created and uh, hopefully you saw it loop that one time. Very simple, uh, but we'll go over how to make everything move and look great. And then in the second part of this class, we'll also talk about captured footage. So um, here you can see we've got our island and you can see some SOS text, abandon all hope, save me, that's been chiseled into the rock. Um, those were all created in post-production. So we'll talk about how to add text that moves with the camera and uh, make it look like it's chiseled into the rock or have other different layer effects. So that's what we will be talking about today. And I'm really excited to get started with you all. Um, first thing we will want to do is we will want to open Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, here's my Adobe Creative Cloud. And you can see I've got some programs already uh, on it, but After Effects is up to date and I'm going to go ahead and open. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention about After Effects, After Effects is a very powerful program and takes up a lot of processing power on your computer. Um, that's all right, but if you're also running another program like Zoom <laughs> right now that I'm using to share my screen, it might cause After Effects to lag a little bit uh, more than you're used to. So um, it's nothing wrong. It's just the computer trying to process everything. Um, during this program, I will be saving my file a lot just in case the program crashes. Hopefully it doesn't, um, but yes. Uh, when you open After Effects, you can see it's welcoming us. Uh, it has some video tutorials uh, up top. 
And then any recent files that we may have created, um, we have a home tab and a learn tab. And that learn tab has even more tutorials. So Adobe really wants you to use their products. They want you to learn how to use their products. Uh, but we are going to be clicking on new project. And when we click new project, we get this screen. Uh, and in the middle of it, we have either new composition or new composition from footage. As I mentioned before, we'll be working from an illustration the first time, uh, and we will be animating everything within that. So we are just going to click new composition. And when we do that, there's this dialog box and it looks very scary with lots of uh, options and things that we might have to worry about. But it's, it's very simple. The main thing that you'll want to change is uh, change the composition name. Um, I will name this relax uh, because that's what we want to do when we go to After Effects. We want to relax. We want to have fun. Um, you can keep the presets just as they are uh, right now. Mine is HD 1920-1080 uh, at 29.97 frames per second. Um, if I click down, you can see there's a lot of other presets. We're not going to worry about those. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that there's a full resolution and a start time code and duration. So for this little animation, five seconds is great for us. We, we only want it to be five seconds long. Um, if you're working with a longer animation, maybe you would want it to be five hours long. And so you would want to change that uh, timestamp right there. But ours is five seconds. We are happy with that um, and we will click okay. So now we're getting a little bit into what After Effects usually looks like when we're working in it. And I wanted to talk a little bit about our workspace. So up top, we've got our menu bar. This is where you'll see file, edit, composition, uh, so on and so forth. These are all drop down menus if we click on them and you can see that we've got save and a bunch of others um, under file. Uh, under edit, we have that lovely undo button, which we love very much. Um, but this is the main drop down menus with various tools and effects. Uh, right underneath it, where we've got that home button, that blue arrow hand magnifying glass, this right here is our toolbar. Um, and the toolbar has different tools that we can add uh, or change graphics. We've also got our workspace options. So right now you can see uh, blue is highlighted or default is highlighted in blue, but I've also got review, learn. And if I click this arrow, there's a bunch of other um, standard default uh, workspace options. And the workspace options just change how your screen looks. Everything is still in After Effects. It just changes how After Effects looks a little bit. Uh, I'm sticking to default though. Um, Underneath these two bars, we've got our project panel and our effect controls panel. So right now project panel is selected, but inside the same blue box, we've got after or effect controls, which we are going to get into a little bit later. Um, the project panel is where all of your media such as footage, audio and images will go. We've got our composition box, our composition panel. And this is basically your monitor. It is where everything you do in your timeline will appear, which speaking of timeline, let's go ahead and talk about uh, our timeline. This right down here um, is our timeline panel. And this is where we can arrange our media chronologically. Right next to the timeline panel, we've got our layers panel. And this is where uh, we arrange our media, how we would like to display them above or below other media. Um, Media is kind of like, if you think of transparencies, if you're that old, um, there's, you can place things on top of each other, essentially, um, in a way, uh, so you can have the boat behind the waves, or you can have the boat in front of the waves, um, stuff like that. Um, but in the layers panel, uh, you can also transform your layers in various ways, including editing position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Um, finally, we've got our essentials panel. And uh, for this class, our essentials panel is not so essential. <laughs> We're not going to be doing a lot in this essentials panel, but you can see there's various effects and presets. Uh, 
depending on what you have selected on the screen, this essentials panel will change to give you more options to edit it. So all that said, we have talked about After Effects to death. Let's actually do something in it, right? Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to import media. So if uh, there's two different ways to do this, really. We can go to File, Import, File, and then we can navigate to our Downloads folder, uh, and we can import that Ocean AI. Um, that's one way to do it. The other way is just to right click here in the project panel and select import file. And then that gives you the same option, download to navigate to the downloads folder um, and import Ocean AI. And this time I am going to import. You can select either of those options, whichever one feels more intuitive to you. You'll see a little pop-up box has appeared. Um, we want to make sure that the import kind is a composition, yes. Um, and the footage dimensions are layer size. That's great, wonderful, yes. We click OK. And uh, it looks like nothing happened. But you can see down here in our project panel, we've actually got um, a folder of all of our ocean layers. And we've got relax as a composition compared to ocean, uh, our composition, right? Uh, and if I double click on ocean, whew, something changed. Um, I am using the scroll wheel right now to scroll down. And as I scroll down, uh, my composition panel zooms out. So you can see here, I created this illustration in Illustrator. Um, we will not be going over how to create illustrations in Illustrator because that is a separate class that teaches you Illustrator basics. But if you go to the Plano Public Library's YouTube page, you can look at our Illustrator basics class and it teaches you uh, basically how to create this. <laughs> So um, using one of the options above, we imported Ocean AI. Um, we clicked on the ocean uh, composition in the timeline panel. And now uh, that we've done that, you can see that we have a lot of things here in our timeline panel and here in our layers panel. Uh, one thing that I uh, mentioned earlier, um, we want to save very frequently, right? So I am going to go ahead and do file, save. It's going to prompt me the first time where I want to save this. I'm going to save to my downloads folder and I am going to call this relax. Um, and I will just be issuing periodic reminders to save as we go through this project. Um, and now that we have saved, that first time, you can see uh, save is normally control S and that's a great keyboard shortcut. Um, control S saves the project without having to really uh, disrupt your workflow as much. So for this class, we will animate most of the elements in our layers panel using the basic transform effects inherent to every element in After Effects. So here you can see we've got different layers. And when I click on these layers, you see a box around them in our composition panel. Um, and uh, as I'm clicking on them, you, you see the boxes move around. Um, that's great. Um, each item is a separate layer. Um, and that means that we can animate it independently of all of the other layers. Uh, that said, um, although we will be animating a lot of these layers, we aren't going to animate every single one. There are some that are just going to stay static. Um, and that is going to be the sun, which is separate from the sun rays behind it. The sun rays are going to move around, but the sun is not. So you'll see two columns here uh, next to the sun layer. And I want you to click on that second box, and then you'll see a little padlock icon. That padlock icon uh, locks the sun in place. So if we wanted to edit it, you can see my screen is kind of blinking and it's saying, no, I can't edit this, it's locked. Um, we also want to lock the background layer. Um, the background is just the, the blue rectangle underneath everything and that's staying in place. We, we don't need to uh, move that at all. Okay. 
So um, the very first animation that we will go through though is the waves animation. Movement is one of the biggest tools in motion graphics and you can move elements such as the waves by toggling down the menu on the individual layer. So I'm going to look at the front waves, layer five, and then you'll see this transform layer uh, and you'll, you can toggle that down as well. And there you see some options such as anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. And um, we opened that transform effect and we are going to click on the stopwatch next to position. So I clicked that stopwatch, it is now blue and you'll see um, in my timeline, I've got this blue line. Uh, this is called a playhead. And when I move my playhead, uh, nothing appears to happen. Right now, everything is still in static position, right? Um, however, right now I have my position in place at zero, zero when the composition starts. If I move my playhead to the very end, at the end of the five seconds, I can move this wave. Uh, so if I zoom out, I can either move it in my composition panel. It's a little tricky for me to move it that way, to be honest with you. Um, and because I only want to move it horizontally, I don't want to move it uh, diagonally or up and down as well. I can um, just use these uh, numbers to adjust my position. So um, I'm going to adjust the first number and I'm going to move my wave so that we have one wave that moved under it entirely, two waves that moved under it entirely, and then maybe like down here. Yeah, sure, that looks good. Uh, I'm thinking about this, maybe that's a little too far, <laughs> maybe like two and a half waves for it to move. So now uh, when I move the playhead back to the beginning and I click in my composition, I'm going to hit the space bar on my keyboard, you can see the front waves are actually moving. And it looks like they are passing the boat by. Uh, this looks a little awkward right now because the boat isn't moving at all and nothing else is, but you'll slowly see as we start to animate more of these layers, uh, the effect really comes to life. So uh, we uh, have two keyframes, uh, these little blue, diamonds right here are called keyframes. And we have one keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end. And we're telling After Effects that we want everything in between these two keyframes to move smoothly at the same speed and it automatically adjusts between those two keyframes. Okay, so next up we are going to, um, we are done with the front waves. So we are going to lock that layer in place. Um, with our little padlock icon, and we are going to move on to layer seven, middle waves. And we are going to toggle down this transform menu as well. And uh, just like our front waves, uh, we are going to move these just a little bit. Uh, we want to, oh, <laughs> this is why, uh, you read your instructions. I forgot to click our little uh, stopwatch. Right now, as I'm just moving the waves, you'll see no keyframe has been created in the timeline panel. So I can move the waves wherever I want to position wise. It's only when that stopwatch is clicked that um, they change over time. So um, you'll see as I kind of scrub through, my waves are still static. But now I've got my playhead here in position. I'm moving my waves back to their original position. We're clicking the stopwatch. We're moving the playhead to the end. And this time we are moving our position over. And when I click play, both of the waves are now moving. And that looks like a pretty good speed for both of them, I think. 
We don't want these waves to be overwhelming the boat. We want it to look like a relaxing ocean day. So middle waves are done and we can click that padlock icon. Uh, and I am going to save control S, lovely. Um, we also need to animate the back waves and we could definitely do the back waves just kind of like we did the front and the middle waves. But if you ever want elements to move in sync together, uh, you can just copy one element's animation so that it follows another basically. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to move my playhead and I am going to look at my back waves down here. And you'll see there's this little twirl symbol uh, in the column that says parent and link. Um, and I'm going to take this little parent pick whip is what it's called. And I'm going to click and drag it over to the front wave. So my front waves are selected. And now when I move both of them, you'll see, oops, that maybe I should move my uh, front waves a little bit less because my back waves are now off the screen a little bit at the very end of the animation. Uh, that said, I'm going to lock my back waves and I'm going to unlock my front waves and position them a little bit less so that my back waves are still on the screen. And now I'm going to lock my front waves. Uh, but that, that parent pick whip is very, very useful. Um, in addition to uh, kind of indicating that you want your animation to follow this animation, um, you can apply other animations and other effects to just this layer, even though um, they're separate. So I highly encourage you to make use of parent and link. Okay, we have done a lot of position animations and now I want to talk a little bit about rotation and size. So we've got our sun rays, uh, layer four next. And uh, we want our sun rays to rotate clockwise and get bigger in the middle of the animation and then get smaller again towards the end. So in order to accomplish this, we will use rotation and scale. Um, I have already toggled down the transform menu and we are going to move the playhead, of course, to the beginning as we always like to start. And we are going to hit the stopwatches by rotation and scale. And you can see two diamonds have been created in our timeline panel. Uh, with this, um, Rotation is a little bit tricky uh, to think your way around. This zero X plus zero zero degrees, uh, you can say, if I just were to hit one, uh, then the sun would rotate one way all the round 360 degrees, plus however many degrees I added here. I don't necessarily need my sun to rotate that quickly. It's only a five second animation and, <coughs> excuse me, um, the, the sun twirling around that quickly is not very relaxing. So um, I am going to move my playhead over to the end um, and I'm going to just toggle the degrees and I'm going to rotate about 180 degrees. Um, I'll, now that I'm at the end of my timeline, I will also want to create a keyframe for my scale because my scale right now is 100%. Uh, so I want my sun to my sun rays to start at one size, get bigger in the middle, and then go back to that original size. So I'm going to create a keyframe by just simply clicking this diamond over in my layers panel. And now you can see two diamonds here at the end of my timeline for scale. However, we also want my sun rays to get bigger. So I'm going to move around kind of to the two and a half mark. It doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. And I am going to increase the scale of my sun rays a little bit. We don't want them too big, uh, but we want them to just get a little bit bigger. Yeah. 
I think about 130, 136, that's, that's pretty good. And now when we play through our animation, we can see those sun rays and they might even be too fast even at 180. Um, if you want to slow down your sun rays a little bit, you absolutely can. Uh, I would recommend using your layers panel to go over to the next keyframe. When you see your keyframe is blue, that means that there is a keyframe at that spot. If it's grayed out, that means that there is not a keyframe at that spot. So we wanna make sure that we're editing this keyframe right here. So if you wanted to slow it down, we could maybe make it uh, 120 degrees or so. Mm. Close enough. And now when we play through our animation, yeah, calm, relaxing, beach, vibes. Okay. So we talked a little bit about rotation already, but I also kind of wanted to talk about uh, advanced rotation options. Right now, our sun rays are rotating around the center point of themselves, right? But sometimes you might want something to orbit uh, around something. So maybe you have uh, a sun animation and maybe like a, or an earth animation here, and then maybe a moon animation going around it. Um, you don't necessarily want to just like keep positioning the moon uh, from one point to another. That doesn't look very smooth. You still want to rotate it, but around a different point. You want to rotate it around the Earth, right? So we are going to mess around with this advanced rotation option um, a little bit. Uh, you can see that I'm switching over to my hand tool. My hand tool allows me to move my composition. And I'm going to go back to the selection tool immediately. Um, we are going to do some fancy rotations with our mermaid. But first, before I forget, we are going to lock our sun rays in place, toggle down that menu, and we are going to save. Okay, so we've got our mermaid girl. Um, and in the layers panel, we are going to open her up in layer eight and locate her transform there. Mm -hmm. We want to select this tool right here in the toolbar. Uh, if I hover over it, you can see that it's called the pan behind anchor point tool. That's not a very intuitive tool name, um, but what this does is it allows us to move this little crosshair over to a different point. This crosshair determines where she rotates around. So, um, if I uh, have this tool selected in my toolbar, the pan behind anchor point tool, I can click on this little crosshairs in my composition panel and I can move it down. Uh, there's no exact point, but the way that I like to think of it, she is an arc that's part of a circle and I want this point to be the center of that circle. Uh, so she's going to be coming up around and then back down. Um, and I think about there is good. If your point is in a slightly different place, that doesn't really matter. Um, the important thing is that we moved that crosshair point. I'm going to switch back to my selection tool now. And I'm going to move my composition over to about the one second mark. So far we've been doing everything from the beginning to end, but for the mermaid, we don't want her to spend the entire animation jumping out of the ocean, right? We want her to just be a quick element that flashes in and flashes out. So um, in the layers panel, we are going to set the rotation a little bit lower um, to about 0.75-ish. And then at about the two second mark. Here's the thing where I went ahead of myself again. I forgot to click my stopwatch. So I'm going to click that stopwatch now <laughs> at the one second uh, frame mark. And when I move over to the two second frame mark, uh, I can now move my mermaid. She appears to be arcing very nicely over here. 
So as I kind of scrub through the animation, she goes bloop, quick jump out of the water. And uh, assuming that that's the right speed, we, we don't want her to be too visible. Um, we want her to do a quick little jump that doesn't seem to defy gravity. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, now that we're happy with that, I'm going to toggle down our mermaid layer and make sure to lock it. Okay, um, next up, we are going to animate this relax up top in layer one. And we are going to transform yet again. Um, and for this one, we are going to create a opacity animation. Opacity relates to how transparent something is, how visible it is. So I'm going to uh, click my stopwatch and I'm going to have it set to 0% opacity in the beginning and 0% uh, opacity probably at like the four second mark and maybe even, yeah, the one second mark. Uh, you can always move your keyframes around if you want in the timeline panel. So I'm moving my opacity keyframe to the one second mark and then the four second mark. And in the two and three seconds, I'm going to create some more keyframes for opacity, but these are going to be 100%. So we're going to have this uh, nothing on the screen, relax slowly fades in, it stays on the screen for a second. And then I'm going to create another keyframe here that's also 100%. So you can see it slowly fades in, stays on the screen, slowly fades out and it's gone. And of course we can move these around however we would like. Mm. If you want relax to show up a little bit longer, that's fine. And we are going to save. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, uh, we are going to use multiple animations uh, together. We are going to animate this bird and this boat. Um, so we're going to start with the boat. And the boat is a little bit tricky because we are going to try to uh, rotate it so that it looks like it's uh, rolling down the waves and then bobbing back up. So we're going to move it up and down, but we're also going to rotate it. So lock my relax layer and go over to my boat. I am not going to forget this time. My playhead is at zero, zero, and I'm going to click my stopwatches next to position and rotation. And right now my boat looks perfectly oriented uh, here, but I'm going to scrub ahead a little bit till I see my boat kind of hovering over the, the ditch of the wave. Um, I'm going to use my hand icon. So you can see I'm considering this kind of to be the lowest point of the wave. And for this, I want my boat to move a little bit. And um, so far I've been doing all of my transformations in the layers panel. If you want, absolutely, you could definitely um, move this uh, in the composition panel. You can see there's a rotation tool. So if we rotate it, we could rotate the boat down. Um, that just doesn't feel as intuitive for me. For some reason, I like numbers and points. So um, if you prefer using the toolbar and moving things up and down with the selection tool, um, you can definitely do that. That's me showing you that you can do that. Everything else I'm just going to use in my layers panel. Okay, so we are going to scroll a little bit further until it looks like the boat is up on the top of the wave. So uh, once again, we are going to adjust the position a little bit adjust the rotation. Yeah. We're going to keep going forward until the boat looks like it's back down uh, in the valley of the wave, in the crest of the wave. I'm not sure what that terminology is, but perhaps you do. Um, we are going to position the boat down or rotate it down and then Make it look like it's falling down. 
back on top of the wave. And then the end five seconds, we're back down. Okay, so scrolling back to the front, we can now see the boat animation. It's rocking in the waves. And we are going to save. So one thing that I wanted to mention about this boat animation, right now it, it looks a little unnatural, right? It kind of looks uncomfortable to look at. Um, this is because the boat is moving at the same speed between all of the points. There's no point for it to slow down. There's no point for it to speed up, which is a little bit unnatural to how physics works and how most animations work. Um, this is a very common problem in animation and uh, the way to fix it is to use something called an ease. Um, so in the position um, property, um, I'm going to go to the menu bar, animation, and then keyframe assistant. And then you'll see that there's this easy ease in and easy ease out and then easy ease. And we are just using easy ease. Um, and you'll see that my boat shifted up just a little bit. You'll also notice in the timeline panel that all of our uh, keyframes have moved a little bit. They are now kind of, mm, they're not quite diamonds. They almost look like, uh, what are those things called? The time turners in Harry Potter, <laughs> the, uh, with the sand, um, I, I don't know what they're called anymore. This is a terrible class. Uh, but um, as we look at these, um, you'll notice the boat kind of seems to move a little bit more naturally now. And that's because of this easy ease that we just added to the animation. What this does is it makes it so that the keyframes, um, the, the effect kind of lingers on the keyframe and in between the keyframes, it goes really, really fast. And then it kind of lingers again a little bit. Then it goes fast between the keyframes and it lingers again. And this uh, is much more natural to how we're used to seeing things uh, change from going up and down as opposed to just going up and down. If you think of like a ball bouncing up and down, it slows as it reaches the top and then it goes fast until it hits the ground, right? Um, so just a note, easy ease is your friend in animation. Okay, Woo. zoomed in a little bit too much there. I'm going to move my composition about a little bit more because we are done with the boat. I'm going to use my selection tool again to lock my boat layer and toggle it down. And you can see we are almost done. All of our layers have been locked except for our bird layer. So. Uh, this is what we need to do for our bird. Um, we are going to toggle down the transformation menu for that one. And uh, with our playhead at the beginning, we are actually going to start with the bird off of our composition. Uh, we can still see the box that surrounds it. It's not lost, it's not deleted. We just have it a little bit off screen at first so that it can fly down, swoop, and then go off to the side. Mm. We are going to click the stopwatches next to position and rotation. And I'm going to move to about there. Um, this is one of those animations that doesn't really have a right way or a wrong way. This is how you feel the bird should move in the sky. Um, and you know, each bird flaps its wings differently. So don't worry too much about where you're putting your keyframes. Um, and we can always adjust later on. So from here, I'm this time I'm clicking and dragging because uh, I am moving it diagonally, not up and down or just side to side. 
And I think I want it to be mm, kind of in the middle of the sky above the boat. And then I'm going to drag it forward just a little bit more. And then we want the bird to kind of move over here a little further down. Mm. Right now you can see that uh, my bird is trying to snap. Um, that's because I have snapping enabled in the toolbar. I'm going to deselect snapping. And now you can see my bird moves much more freely, um, but I kind of want to move it a little bit further down, closer to the waves. And then um, maybe around here, I want to click and drag my bird back over here. Um, and you'll see that we have this line, this little path that our bird is following. So I want maybe a little loop for my bird to follow. Um, but if I play my animation at this point, this isn't how birds fly. No, they, they don't just fly in straight points, right? They, they fly much more fluidly in curves, right? Uh, I wouldn't consider the way that a bird flies to be a straight line, it's more of a curved line. So in order to change this, uh, we need to use the pen tool. Um, the pen tool is a very powerful tool, uh, but we are only really working on some very small aspects of it. The pen tool though, um, allows us to change the path a little bit. These points that the line is following are called anchor points and the pen tool allows us to edit the anchor points. So if I uh, click and drag on a point of the line, um, I can create these anchor handles. And these anchor handles, uh, I can adjust individually um, so that they are a little bit rounder. Um, you can see as I'm moving this anchor point handle, the line kind of is drawn to it. Um, but I think that's that's a pretty good line right there. And then if I click and drag this point, I think I wanna click and drag this line up a little bit more. And maybe that goes there. And with this selection tool, I can move this back down. So now it looks like our bird is kind of moving in a swooping arc and it's a little bit more natural, right? Playing looks pretty good. It moved a little bit fast right here, um, but that's okay. We can adjust our keyframe. Uh, so that it's a little bit more spaced out. And of course, birds just don't stay at the same angle. So somewhere in this, uh, we will want to adjust our rotation of our bird. Maybe down here, he's swooping a little bit more to this side. And then kind of at the top of that, he's moving a little bit more to that side again. So just adjusting the angle, it looks a bit more like he's swooping. And uh, you can add as many rotation angles as you want. Just have fun with it. Be a bird. Last but not least, we are going to save and we are going to lock our bird layer. And look at that, all of our layers are locked. Yay. Okay, so, so far, uh, we have been saving everything as an After Effects file. It's called an After Effects project file, an AEP file. And this file can only be opened in After Effects. Um, that's great, but in order to share this image with others, maybe we are so proud of this, we wanna share it on social media or do something with it. Um, we would probably want to export it as a different file type, something that is a bit more universally recognized, either a animated GIF or an MP4 file. So in the menu bar, I'm going to go to file, export, and then you'll notice that there's a few different options. Uh, we can 
add to Adobe Media Encoder queue or we can add to render queue. I'm going to suggest that you do the Adobe Media Encoder queue. The Adobe Media Encoder queue opens up a new, ooh, it opens up a new program called Adobe Media Encoder. And the sole purpose of this program is to save files as different file types. Um, it's great at having a lot of different options. So you'll see that here in my queue, uh, don't worry too much about all of the panels, just really worry about these. Um, hmm. I have ocean and I have beach. What did I name this? I think I named it ocean. Beach was a separate thing and I'm going to remove beach. Yes. Um, so uh, it takes it a second, but our ocean uh, file from After Effects, you can see that After Effects icon right there, does show up in the queue and we can change the format of it to pretty much anything. <laughs> um, I would suggest animated GIF for this, uh, but you could also save it as an H.264. If you don't know what an H.264 file is, it's the most common uh, video format. It's an MP4 file. Um, and this is what YouTube uses. This is what Facebook uses. It's what everybody uses. Um, but you can save it as a video for sure. Or uh, if you want it just to loop forever, you can choose animated GIF. Um, you can change the preset right here. Um, the reason why you would want to change the preset right now, our file is 1900 by 1000 pixels. And that's quite a little bit big for a GIF. Um, that would mean our GIF takes a very long time to load. And we don't necessarily want that. So I am going to click this button that says match source. Oh, I'm going to click that little checkbox that uh, is under match source rather. And I am going to scroll down my width until it's only about 600. Um, and if I do this, the height is 339. That is still a pretty large GIF actually, but it's much more in keeping with uh, what you'll find on the internet. So I'm going to make this full size so that I can click okay in the bottom corner. And last but not least, you wanna make sure that you understand where, at, where you are saving this to. Um, so this output file, if you click there, um, you can see we are not saving where I want this to be at all. I want this in my downloads folder in that basic uh, After Effects basic motion graphics folder. And I'm going to save it as ocean.gif, save. And uh, once I am ready, I'm going to click this start queue, this green play button in the upper corner. It takes it just a few seconds. Anything that's animated or video takes a bit longer than a static image, but then it is done. So I can open it in my file. And there's our lovely little animation. Yay, we did it. Okay. Next up, we are going to move on to motion tracking with camera footage. Um, so I'm going to open After Effects again. I'm going to save my file, of course. And then I'm going to go to File, New, New Project. And here we get our starting screen again. And this time, instead of saying new composition, because we have an illustration, we are going to select new composition from footage. We are going to find this beach.mp4 file in our downloads, and we are going to say import. And it didn't take long at all. You'll see that um, it already opened up a beach composition for us. And our beach mp4 uh, has a layer down here in the timeline panel or in the layers and in the timeline panel. And it's just a nice little beach scene. Um, and it's very, very long. <laughs> um, 
so the first thing that we want to do is we want to make this just a little bit shorter. Um, so we are going to hover the mouse cursor over at the end of the clip, and you'll see that the mouse cursor changes from just a regular mouse icon to something with like a straight horizontal line with double arrows on the end. And if I click and drag this, I'm going to click and drag to about hmm, there. Uh, you can see that it effectively shortens the clip, right? Uh, we, we just get black after that. Um, we will also want to change our work area. So instead of having our work area be this entire piece, we are going to change our work area to just here. So that when we play back the clip, it ends at the end of our work area and doesn't continue on into the black forever. Okay. And if you want, you can zoom in a little bit to make your work area the, the full screen. And I just did that by uh, using this little zoom in, zoom out with the mountains on the bottom of the screen. So motion tracking with camera footage. Um, the, the main thing to know about camera footage is that we want to do some camera tracking. So we are going to select the beach layer in the layers panel. And in the menu bar, we are going to go to animation, uh, did they change this? I think they changed this. It used to be uh, that there was a track option right here that had track camera in it, but um, we just wanna click track camera. <laughs> um, here in the effect controls, you can see that something's happening um, and you can see our composition panel changed so that it's analyzing in background step one of two. Um, you can see it's at 3% right now. It's analyzing all of these frames out of 936. And it's trying to analyze what are the fixed points so that it can recognize how the camera is moving and how the space is in three dimensions. Um, it's a very advanced process that the computer is doing, but it's a very basic process for us. We just watch it do all the work. Um, there's very little on our end that we have to worry about. We just have to be patient um, because it may take a while, especially because I'm running After Effects and Zoom at the same time. <laughs> but you'll see 16 seconds remaining. Um, this tracking the camera is useful for when you have drone footage such as this where you're moving uh, on an island but it can also be when the camera is steady in that case uh, you would actually want to use the track motion um, feature instead of track camera our camera is moving um, but if your camera was steady maybe it's on a tripod and other things are moving around it that's when you would want to track motion both do very similar things, and you will see what that looks like in just a second, hopefully. Solving camera. Okay. Well, that doesn't look like it did anything. There we go, okay. Um, normally, once it's done, you'll see these little X's on the screen. And you can see as I'm hovering, there's this giant bullseye that appears to be kind of moving around. Um, so first thing that I like to do is I like to make my track point size just a little bit bigger so that those X's are a little bit bigger. Uh, I like around 122 personally. And then the target size does not need to be that big. Um, I kind of, uh, it depends on the project in my opinion, but the target size for this can be about 30% and it's still plenty big in my opinion. Um, so I was just adjusting the size in the effect controls panel. Um, and if that didn't pop up for you, uh, you can see that we've got our project panel and our effect controls panel. They're just separate tabs in the same box in the upper left. Mm. 
So with all of this, uh, we want to move our track to a nice little bit of rock. I think this rock face is perfect. Beautiful cliffs, definitely somewhere where somebody could chisel something. So I am going to um, make sure that I'm zoomed in here pretty well. And I'm going to use my selection tool uh, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on these individual points. Mm. And what I'm trying to do is I am trying to click on all of the points on this rock face um, so that After Effects kind of understands the plane that I'm trying to do something in. And once I have enough points, I think this is probably more than enough points. Um, once I have enough points, I'm going to right click uh, somewhere within my bullseye and I'm going to say create text and camera. Ooh. And you will see actually, if I zoom out a little bit, my text is there and it looks uh, pretty hideous and not in the area that I wanted it at all. So uh, now that we've got our text added though, uh, we are going to select the text layer. And you'll see this weird gimmick thing, doodad, gizmo. Um, it determines how big or how, how angled our text is. So uh, you'll see green, um, a green arrow and a green circle. And if I move my green circle around, my text starts to kind of rotate around a little bit. You'll also see a blue circle that adjusts the angle of that text uh, and a red circle, which determines uh, this angle of text. I actually think that Adobe After Effects had it just about right. Mm. but we will want to change our text size, of course, right? Right now it's off um, and we want to change our text. Text. Um, I'm going to write s.o.s. And here in the essentials panel, you can see that we have a lot of options for size. Mm. So if I highlight everything, I can make my text a little bit smaller. Ooh, that's a lot a bit smaller. I didn't want it that small. Okay, this might be one of those times where I actually use my composition panel to stretch my text out. over here on the cliff face near the bottom. Um, also in my essentials panel, you'll see that my text right now is papyrus, but you can change it to whatever font you would like. Um, I also really like Aunt Mildred MVB. So I think that I'm going to select that. Um, also in the text panel, when you have the text layer selected, you can change the color. Uh, so right now the fill is a very dark gray, but I can change it to a lighter gray, or I can use this eyedropper to select a color from the cliff face. Um, so I want a fairly dark gray, but maybe about that. And right now that might be even a little bit too light, a little bit darker, please. Right now, my text just looks like it's kind of floating on the rock face. We are going to make it so that it looks chiseled in a second, but we're going to do that with all of our other text effects. So um, we are going to move forward a little bit. And next up, I want to add some text over here into this cliff panel. Um, that said, uh, you'll notice that all of our little dots are gone. Where did our dots go? Uh, if you click on the beach layer, uh, and then click on the camera tracker and the effect controls, you can see all of your little dots again. 
So once again, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select all of these little points on the cliff face. And this time when I right click on the bullseye, you'll see it only says create text. In the layers panel, you'll see that there's already the 3D tracker camera that's been uh, created. So uh, it's a little bit different this time, but our text has been created. And this time I am going to say help. And of course we want this a little bit smaller. So, okay, about there. We can, of course, rotate this around a little bit um, and it takes a little bit to figure out how to move these circles around, but it's not too hard. Um, just fiddle around with them and you'll get it. Okay. I think you get the point. Uh, you shift click all of your little bullseye points that you pull up using the beach uh, camera 3D tracker. Uh, once you have all of your points selected, you right click in the middle of the bullseye to create text. Um, and you would just continue on for the rest of the cliff face. Um, but how do we make these layers actually look chiseled into the rock? They just look like floating text right now. Uh, we are going to add layer styles. So I am going to highlight both of my text layers and you can see that little gizmo on both of them. And uh, in my layer panel, I am going to go to layer styles. Yes, right there. And I am going to select inner shadow. And uh, now when we zoom in on our SOS, it looks like it's been a little bit chiseled in. In your uh, layer itself, you can see we've got one for uh, SOS and help individually. Um, but you can see that there's different options for your uh, inner shadow. So I'm, since I've got SOS on the screen, I'm going to pull up SOS's inner shadow. Uh, we can make this color uh, a little bit lighter. We can set the opacity to be a little bit less so that it's not quite as shadowy of a chisel. Um, you can change various different things like the angle. Um, if you wanted to make it seem like the sun angle is from coming from a different direction, you could definitely play around with that or the size or any of these other options. So play around with those inner shadow settings until it looks right, basically. And that is how we create some chiseled graffiti on our island. And uh, depending, it, it can look fairly convincing. So last but not least, we would want to export this. We would go to File, Export. And this time, uh, After Effects is very good at exporting MP4 files. So you could just add to render queue. Um, when you do that, you will see a render queue opens up where your timeline panel used to be. Um, and you can just uh, say, I'm, I'm looking at these default settings and yes, best settings and H.264 file is that MP4 file that I was talking about. That's very common on YouTube and such. Um, the only thing that you would necessarily need to do is click on this output too that says not yet specified. And you would need to specify <laughs> where you want it saved. Um, so I am going to save this as graffiti.mp4. 
And uh, once I'm done, I just click render. And rendering can take it a while. Uh, sometimes it's faster though. We, we didn't do too many effects. Um, I, I felt like you really understood the, the process after the first two text effects, but keep practicing with all of the different text effects that you want to add. So uh, to wrap up, uh, we learned how to uh, make a composition from an illustration and make a composition from footage. We learned uh, a lot about After Effects. I hope you feel that you learned a lot about After Effects, but this is really just scratching the surface. I hope that you realize this is a very powerful program. I don't think that we touched on maybe like 5% of what After Effects is capable of, and we already learned how to do so much. So I would really encourage you to just get in there and play around with it. If you didn't know, the Plano Public Library offers After Effects as part of our digital creation space. Those are available at Harrington, Parr, and Haggard Library. And then each Plano Public Library also offers an Adobe Creative Cloud computer where uh, those computers are out on the public floor and they have full access to the Adobe Creative Cloud, including After Effects. So that's a great resource for you as well. Um, use that for free. Uh, last but not least, I did want to mention, um, we do have a Plano Public Library uh, website. Mm, I don't want any of these guest mode, please. If you go to planolibrary.org or click the link that I'm sure Stephanie is dropping into the chat, um, you will see our website. And if you uh, see this little search bar in the very middle, you'll see there's a little button for research and learn. If you click this button, you can go to our databases page. And uh, this includes our business and career databases. Uh, even if you're learning After Effects for fun, After Effects is also a career option for other people. So um, I would encourage you to click on that one. And then you would have access to LinkedIn Learning, and you would also have access to Udemy. LinkedIn Learning allows you uh, to explore uh, a variety of um, videos that are all centered around business and career. So everything Adobe Creative Cloud is on here, including After Effects courses. Uh, but there's also things like music theory. There's also things like uh, leading in government, leadership foundations, uh, email basics, there's Excel, there's access. There's so many different uh, courses that are on LinkedIn Learning. Um, and at the very end, you get a certificate that you can post to your LinkedIn. Gail Udemy presents, or Gale Presents Udemy, rather, uh, is very similar to LinkedIn Learning, where you have a variety of video courses. All of the exercise files are included, and uh, you get step-by-step -step help from professionals. And uh, both of these provide After Effects tutorials with many more details on advanced visual effects that you can do in After Effects. Uh, and if you wanted to watch this, um, in the future, you can go to our Plano Public Library YouTube. And here, uh, you can watch all of our videos uh, and all of our live broadcasts. Um, if you scroll over to the side, you'll also get a magnifying glass. And as I mentioned before, uh, we did not talk about how to make that Illustrator illustration. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could search for Illustrator classes and go through the Illustrator Basics class and learn how to create an Illustrator. Or we also have Microsoft classes, more Adobe classes. The options are endless. We want to be your gateway to learning, and we hope that you have enjoyed this and learned something from it. Um, last but not least, though, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my name is Anna Kubinska. I am a library instructor and research specialist at Haggard Library, but I am happy to talk to anyone who visits any Plano Public Library. Um, we also want to encourage you to listen to our Plano Library Speaks podcast. It has a lot of great 
uh, news features, different services that you may not be aware that the library provides. Thank you so much for attending our virtual program. Uh, you can find more resources at planolibrary.org. We also have a blog, planolibrarylearns.org. And please listen to our podcast. At the very end of this, as you close out of your Zoom, I do hope that you see a survey. Um, please fill out that survey if you can. It doesn't have to be very detailed, but it lets us know if we did well, if we are meeting your needs, what other classes you might want us to teach in the future. And that really helps us out just knowing, are we on track? Is there something that we could do better for you? So we look forward to hearing your feedback. Have a great day.